morning, friend. Uh, it's certainly a privilege to be here in the tabernacle again this morning. We journey along to uh, different parts of the world and so forth. Sometimes you wonder if you're ever going to be back again. <laughs> but, uh, to see the perils and dangers and things that lies ahead. But as Brother Neville has just said, the Lord will take care of us. That's we learn to trust Him for everything. And this morning, it's, uh, I believe that I have a deeper love for the Lord Jesus than I've ever had in all my life. After seeing the different religions of the world and their operation and what they believe in their theology and so forth, and then to come to realize that we as Christians have the true and living God. Amen. Uh, all other religions just seem to fade away into nothing when, when Christianity is brought to the, the place. Now, I'm not too loud to talk. If anybody wants to come just a little closer, while you're, you're more than welcome to come forward while we're waiting. I just want to give a report of the meeting uh, overseas just briefly and uh, so that you'll have a, a conception of what the Lord did do overseas or we are you are part of the group that sent me and you prayed for me while I was over there so you have a right to know what the Lord did it was a, a great and marvelous meetings we had the uh, in Portuguese uh, Lisbon Portuguese, we had uh, one of the best meetings that I had in a long time just to drop in like we did. It's strictly 100% Catholic country, uh, uh, Portuguese is, which come from Spain, and the Spanish were Catholic and moved in, and all, all Portuguese is Catholic. But right in the midst of all of it, the Lord poured His Spirit out upon the congregations, and we had such meetings and miracles, and many, many thousands. Now, if there's Catholic people here, I'm not trying to say that people were converted to Christianity out of Catholicism, because it's a representative of Christianity, but the people who usually just go to the Catholic Church and not real devout Christians... We have it in Protestants, too. They just say, well, I'm a Catholic because my grandmother was a Catholic, and that's it. They don't, don't consider it. But these people like that were led to the Lord Jesus Christ by the thousands in the meeting in Portuguese. Then we went from there to Rome, and right, I visit the great uh, catacombs where the Christians worship in the beginning, the early ages. And there we had such a marvelous experience to go down, especially in the San Angelo uh, catacomb. And, uh, of course, our guides strictly were Catholic, but they tried to say they were Catholic, but all the inscriptions and everything showed that it was different. It wasn't, you see. And then from there we went to the Vatican City. And um, in the Vatican City, I had a marvelous time and had a healing service right in the shadows of St. Peter's Cathedral there. <laughs> a great meeting and literally oh, just all it could get around where we had to do it secretly and just let the people know where we were at. And thousands come out and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and he worked miracles and signs and wonders among the people in the, at the Vatican City. And I could have met many of the great celebrity of the country on this time because Baron von Blomberg was with us. He was the manager of the meeting and well known by all the monarchs and potentates and so forth of the world. In Lisbon, while we met the governor, the parliament, had dinner with them, and in Rome, all the dignitaries there, and this king, Forzu, Forzo, or what his name was, out of Egypt, had just married the young lady, you know, we understood, and then they were divorced again, and he has the right to have four wives, so he, he only has about one or two now, but he married this young girl, school girl, and you heard the publicity in the paper and so forth. Nice man to talk to, big fella, great, I mean big fella, <laughs> he was big, so he, 
He was a nice man. Then we met a couple of queens of down in the Orient and so forth. And then they were there at Rome, and knowing that we were there, come to meet us and had an audience with the Pope, and could have went up and talked to him, but. When I found out she had to kiss his ring and his toe, I said, no, no. Uh, no. See, I'll give any man his due regards, his reverend, doctor, whatever he is, to give him honor and take off my hat to him as a gentleman or so forth. But when he comes to worship, there's only one. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would not do that. So he said, he had asked, uh, asked the baron and so forth if he could have me over there on a Tuesday afternoon or something like that. He said, now when you go in, so the first thing you do, you bow down before him, then he holds out his ring, you kiss his ring, then he sticks his foot out with a toe on that. I said, no, no, no. <laughs> no, sir, just forget that. We won't do that. So then went on to Cairo, Egypt, and Athens, Greece, on down into the different parts of the country, and wound up in Bombay. And I tell you, I don't believe that I could come out of what I've seen in Bombay in 10 years of what I've uh, it's the most pathetic sights that i ever seen in my life from around the world. This is practically all but the extreme east. I've practically visited all the countries of Europe and Asia and, uh, and uh, through that part of the country, even to the borderlines of Russia, but never been in Japan yet. And that's supposed to be next on the program is Australia and New Zealand and Japan. My next stop from where I was at was Hong Kong, China. We was just around on the other side, way closer to come to the United States, coming this way. We just had to stop at Hong Kong, Tokyo, Formosa, and Guam, Wait, Philippines, and here. Instead of that, we go plumb back around this other way to come, come in again. But in there, there is no poor people in America. I don't care where he is and how hard he has to live, there's no, not one poor person in America. Amen. If you find him in the alley eating out of a garbage can, his clothes all off of him and everything else, he's a millionaire. Don't never think he's poor, because he's not, if he wants to visit India. If you see the poor people there, why, I tell you, I'm hard-hearted. I've seen so much and had to go through so much. Many of you might not understand how it affects it has on a human being. When you see so many things, you have to ride over the top of it all the time like that. Make yourself feel different. And after a while, you get into that kind of an atmosphere until you look at things and just don't notice it because you, you, you've got yourself to that place. Like a doctor, have to cut a man open, reach in, take his appendix out. First time he did it, perhaps he fainted or something. But after a while, he gets to a place he knows it's got to be done, so he just goes and does it. And if a patient lives or dies, why, well, he just... He's done the best he can. And a minister gets in the same way when you're especially an apostle or, or well, an apostle is a missionary. The word mission, apostle means one sent. And while the missionary wants to be called a missionary instead of an apostle, I don't know the Bible order of it is, is an apostle. And so then he's sent out. To, he's not exactly has to be a minister. He apostle don't have to be a minister. He just has to be one that's sent. God sent him to do certain things. And then in there, I tell you, when we mo went into India and to see those poor people laying on the streets and starving to death, and little mothers with their babies and begging for something, them dying himself from starvation, but don't let their baby die. And for just little quarter pennies or anything, if they can get that much food every three days, they can make it. They don't have no home to go to. Just when they get sleepy, they lay on the street. And the old razorback hog maybe don't get over about that big and his sides pulled together from starvation, walking around over the people. And old goat and him <laughs> about to reel to pieces too, walking over the people. And they stink. And oh, you've never seen such a conglomeration as India's in. Of course, it's practically always been that way. It's nothing new. They just got their independence about six years ago on bankruptcy from England, as you know. And they're, they're very odd people. I've never seen a man in all India with the millions that I got to see that had limbs up above anywhere in their thigh up here that big around. All real skinny, bony people. And 
at my window, it would break the heart of a man as my son sitting back there listening and he sat at the window and watched us, people sitting on the streets when they found out where was that and lepers with no hands on, things like little stubs raising up in the air begging for something to eat or anything and no feet and white over with leprosy. And oh, it's one couldn't help the other and hardly, and oh, it's the most pitiful sight you've ever seen. I said to the missionaries, I said, I just can't spend it. I'd give her a penny I had away and everything on the streets. And I, I, I thought they got just as much right to eat as my Sarah and Rebecca has. And, and, and you just don't realize how blessed you are, people. Now, that's right. You don't realize it. You know, you ought to look up and see where it comes from. And American people's like a hog under apple tree, you know. He, all day long, the apples will hit him on the head, and he'll eat them and never look up to see where they're coming from. And that's the way we are. We never give it to thought. I mean in whole. I ain't meaning you people here. You're Christians. But I, I mean the people in whole, how they just, they don't, they don't realize how blessed and how well off they are. The garbage of Jeffersonville would feed, uh, today would feed a quarter part of the Indian. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And they'd be happy to get it. Anything. They, you see the man in the garbage can and say, well, Brother Brandon, what about that fellow? He's no clothes, hard and ragged. But look, only thing he has to do is ask charity and it help him. That fellow ain't got no charity over there. He especially is living in a shack somewhere where if it rains, he can get in a boxcar. He ain't got nothing to go to. Where he falls, he just lays there. They pick them up when they die and cremate them, throw them in a big pit or somewhere like that, and put them away off the streets or whatever more, lepers and so forth. No one wants them, no place to go, nothing. They're hungry. They're human beings just the same as we are. And I'll tell you, brother, I, I couldn't stand it. I almost had a nervous break now. Now, I've been home now all these days since last Sunday. Now, I couldn't get out of the room. My wife there knows the truth for about five days. It like to kill me. Even when a doctor took in my blood pressure, and he said, "Man, you better get some rest. That your nerves is so low to your blood pressures went way down, and won't even put, pick your blood up like that to bring it up again." I, it just nearly broke me in two to see such things. And that, and some of the missionaries said, "Brother Brandon, if this hurts you, don't you ever go to the interior because it's well many many times worse than this. Bombay's their biggest city and nicest city they got, and you ought to see it." And now to the religions. To that side, I've never seen such so many superstitions. People total blind from looking at the sun, worshiping the sun. Just go blind looking at the sun. I was entertained yet there by well, the celebrity. That's true from Mr. Nehru and the president and the parliament and all of them. I got their tickets and things right here in my pocket, their little cards and so forth. They were nice, couldn't be any nicer, treats you nice. But I went to the mayor of Bombay to his office. Your chicken house looks a lot better, see, from the best that they had. And so there's uh, nothing to eat, and on the streets, it's the most pathetic sight that you've ever seen. When you send your cure packages, send them to India. Yes, sir. Now, I am not here as a critic. I told my wife coming down, if anything I want to get away from and ask this church to pray for me is quit criticizing. I'm critical in my heart. And I, I don't mean to be that way. Just as soon as I reached the American soil, before I got over here, I seen the American people and started criticizing right then. When I looked and seen a little old mother in the back of a plane, we were coming second class, the way really preachers should travel. And back in a plane, a little mother back there, some little children. And here was the fellow sitting there fussing at those children because we've been, I've been there 58 hours, but they would, and they had been in about about 35 hours, the poor little fellows restless and them carrying on and then see the American women raised up, dressed like uh, so immoral, even to their immoral being, uh, uh, their, their uh, starvation. Them women can come here and teach these American women how to live decent. Amen. That's right. You never, on the street, I don't care if it's your wife, you can't stand within six inches of her. They'll take you in. See, that's right. There's no smooching up and loving and things on the streets there. And their women never look at a man in his face when they're talking to him to keep their head down like this and walk away. And they, and they don't let him on the street like that and so forth. And it's it, the morals and to come to find people in starvation and heathens as it was, as that was, and to see the low degraded part of our nation here, it makes me critical. And I, I stood in the hotel at the Tar Tar Major, I guess, Billy, yeah. How do you pronounce that, Billy? How do you, how, Billy Paul? How do you 
pronounce that Taj Mahal Hotel? Taj Mahal. <laughs> Anyhow, and, and, at the hotel there, and Billy is a witness, two Americans come in. And when they went to the street, we watched them as they walked out. They walked out amongst those poor people out there, and a little old boy ran up to him. He's some kind of disease to get. He's about eight years old. His toe was about that big around, two of them, and stuck up about that high, and he had to pull his little feet like that, walk up and ask for a penny, you know, or something like that to get him something to eat. And those Americans said, turn around like that and walk away. I said, God, be merciful. High-headed. And Nehru and them and talking to us said, we would like to have your all's way of how uh, and your democracy and so forth like that, but we don't want your spirit. <laughs> That's right. We don't want that heady, high feeling that you all have in America. We don't want it. See? They didn't pull no bones about telling us either that we don't want that. And I said, that's not true representation of Christianity. Amen. I said, that's a form of hypocrisy. Amen. Absolutely. I said, Christians don't act like that. Amen. I said, all in America don't act like that. I said, we have just as humble and sweeter people as they do anywhere in the world. But we have some, I said, to, to my sorrow to say it, I said, the most of them in the majority are that high heady, high-minded type like that. Amen. And to come here, and it makes me critical, you see, and I don't want to be that way. And I found out after so much seeing so much and everything like that, so, uh, brother and sister, my old friends here in the tabernacle, bless your hearts, you don't realize what I went through in my days. Yeah. 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 beat you and everything, and you're trying to do the best that I can to answer before God someday. But I have to... So if you see me doing wrong, don't condemn me. Just feel sorry for me. Try to correct me, you see. Well, I don't mean to be that way, but you just have to go through so much. You don't realize. And you have to ride over so much. And I can tell you things this morning which would not be lawful for me to tell you this morning. You'd realize why I was up there five days at home and couldn't move around. That's right. You don't realize it. How what's happened since the little old innocent preacher standing here in the pulpit? Why is crossed over that heart and cut through and beat through and pulled through? God only knows. I don't even tell it to the people, not even to my own wife. I just keep it between God and I and move on to the best I can. But you realize that a human being, his mind can only stand so much. And then he goes out, you see. And what helped me, I don't know. It's just been God alone that's done it. Now, there's all kinds of religions in India. Everything's got a religion. Everything's got its own way. I was entertained for the historical, never before that the religions of India ever got together to entertain a Christian. But two weeks ago last Thursday, I was entertained by the religions of India, and many of them worship fly, and they worship cattle, and they worship uh, all everything. And they were there, the Jans. When we were studying together in their temple, where their priests, that religion formed before Christianity was ever born, three or four thousand years ago, they have a monastery, they have monks, very type of Catholicism. They pull their beards out with their hands and their hairs off their head like that with their hands. Then they start coming back, you can't cut it. And they are so, in a way, to the... They take a, a broom or a little mop. They sit there and the monks make these little mops. And they go before like that to be sure that you don't step on an ant or something kill it. If it would, it would be a mortal sin and you wouldn't be forgiven. They carry a white thing over their mouth and around their ears where if they breathe, they'd have to breathe a little gnat in. They'd never be forgiven for it. Just, it'd, it'd kill something. And, uh, oh, my, how could they ever accept the blood sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. they heard of him, but they don't believe it. They know about Jesus. The missionaries think. He said, oh, yes, but you people are all mixed up. That you, you, you think of that man Jesus, if he was a holy man, that cruel man crucifying? Nonsense. Said he got on a horse and rode up to heaven. That's where he went. And, um, and the Sikhs, they wear a turban. In here they have a knife. And every time you get a Christian with his back turned, they kill him. See, because when he gets to heaven, the Christian's going to heaven too, but when he gets to heaven, he's going to be the Christian, he's going to be the servant to the Jan, you see. So he have a lot of servants if he can get rid of a lot of them down here on earth, you see. And so, if he kills you, you're just killed, that's all. And back in their turban, you tell they got a little comb sticking here and a knife sticking around the side there. They just only want you with your back turned, that's all they want to do. And then, um, this everything, your religions of the world. And address them that night, the first night of the meeting, when there was no way at all to estimate the people that was there. 
There's no place you could put them in the monsoon, which is the rains is on, and the people laying out there and just helpless and all oh, such pathetic cases. And it happened to be that the first one to come up with anything that they could get up was a little boy, which was, I believe he was a Hindu, wasn't he, Paul? And he couldn't, a little deaf and dumb child, and was born deaf and dumb. And I said, now here is the first case. A little lad here, I said, now each one of you, one with Jans will try to get them to be Mohammedans, and the others that try to get uh, different things, and your Yaliks, and they all read their Bibles. They have not this Bible, and they have the Koran Bible, you know, that. So they have, that's through the Mohammedans, and they, they have different uh, founders. Now there's some of them there that believe that a man is God himself. And every man is a God, and the better you are, the better God you are. <laughs> and oh, it's, it's a horrible to see how they do. And all that, I said, now look, uh, gentlemen, I couldn't call them brethren. I just addressed them as gentlemen of the religions of the world. See? And I said, now I want to ask you something. There are, we're all here today or tonight, brother, and all these different things. You worship cattle, you worship everything. And I said, it's all... If you'll excuse me, superstition. All of them could understand English. They couldn't talk it back, but England's controlled them so long. I said, you're, you're here, and we're, each one, you're representing different religions. I said, and you go and proselyte. You take a, a, a Sikh to make him a Jan, and you take a Muhammad to make him a, a Buddha, and so forth like that. I said, it's only change of thought. That's all. I said, we have something similar in America. We're not immune from these things. I said, but we all believe in one God. I said, then we have Methodists and Baptists and Presbyterians, and they proselyte among one, one another to get into organizations. But you all proselyte from one God to another, you see. But I said, now, which is it? It's everyone's superstition. I said, the very creature, the fly that you worship, the cow that you worship, the horse or whatever it may be, God Almighty created that being. Amen. Now I said, you're worshiping the creation instead of the creator. Amen. Amen. The being, I said, and all of it. Now I said, there's none of them, and some of them are the idols and so forth. I said, there's none of them that can help you. There's none of them that can speak back. They're all dumb, and none of them can speak back. None of them can come in action. But there's only one true and living God, and Jesus Christ is his son. Amen. And I said, now that's who I'm here to represent. I said, now, as the Elijah, the prophet, brought the, all the prophets of Baal and so forth to Mount Carmel to prove and say who is God. I said, now there's only one thing to do. And then, if your gods are right, then let me leave mine and serve yours. Now, here stands the deaf and dumb boy. Which one of your gods can make him whole? <laughs> give, him, give him his uh, hearing and speech. That's what I want to know. See, which one can restore speech to this boy? And everybody's silent. I said, um, now Christianity has been represented to you in the form of doctrine and in pamphlets and in Bible, which I am for it, 100%. God help those missionaries to go there to live there. Yes, sir. But I said, it's not fully been represented to you. See? I said, it's been represented to you in word only. But the God that wrote that word that you've already got placed in your heart has now come to a place where he's going to make the word live. Amen. He makes himself in the word. Now I said, here stands the lad. He's deaf and dumb. He can't speak or hear or nothing. He's been born that way. And the Holy Spirit there has revealed the sins and the things of people, and they just almost faint when they see that show. And all of them make so much noise you couldn't understand because they just had militia to watch them, you know, and they're just up and down and all my... They said people from all over India was there, so you you couldn't tell what was there. You see how many or nothing. You couldn't understand it. So then, then this little boy, when I brought him up there, and I said, "Now, Heavenly Father, you know that I'm just like these other men here. I'd be in their shape and worse if it wasn't for your grace. See, you saved me, and I, I, uh, this is all ordained of you, not for myself. And now you know that I never say that I can do one thing. It's you, Lord." Amen. But right here, while the religions and superstitions of this world, as it was in the days of Elijah the prophet, as it was in the days of Jesus your son, so is it now again. I said that it might be known, Lord God, once more, 
That you're the only true and living God. Amen. The one who made the mankind and can Amen. make the dumb to speak or the deaf to hear. Amen. I said, I asked you in the name of your son, according to his words, that asked you anything as a Christian believer, uh, as anything in his name to the Father it would be given. I said, now I believe his word. And I asked for the dumb and deaf spirit to leave the child. Like that. I cut my hands like that. He turned and looked around. You're going to hold his ears up like that. And there he was, good speaker here, as good as anybody in the audience. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. The next, then you couldn't, you had to take you out. There's no way. And they just, they pulled my shoes off nearly, my clothes off. The armies couldn't hold them back. The militia, the guards couldn't hold them back. They'd run right and break that line of guards like that. They'd worship you. If, you, if they could, they don't understand. And no matter how much you try to get to them, they don't. The next was the man, on the next evening, was a man had been blind all, about 20 or 30 years, a sun worshiper, watching the sun until his eyes had gone out. You know, like that. Looking right in the sun, who is totally blind, hadn't seen for 20 or 30 years. He had to be the next one his way through to get up there on the next night. I said, now, which one is last night? After it got through, you couldn't hardly hear. You see, there's this everywhere, every religion and thing. I said, how many of you now want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ? You see, and everything that could be seen except the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything. And, of course, you couldn't, uh, where I could see, is I couldn't see very much. We, we couldn't have an open air. The rains are pouring and things like that. And there's just people there, and you couldn't get to them. And heart oh, was the most pathetic sight you've ever seen. And, um, and then still coming over the roads and things, pulling an old goat along, you know, or something like that, trying to get to the meeting. And then the night when the blind man, I said, now, which one of your gods can give him his sight? I said, here's one of your own worshipers. Through superstition has put his eyes out, looking at the sun. I said, that he worships the sun because he you knows it's some created being. It's been created, some creature that's been created, something. But I said, the very creator that created the sun created the eyes in this man. See, yeah. it's the same one. And I said, now, if he will, God will give him his sight, before I ask you anymore, how many of you will accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the crucified? They couldn't understand how that, that holy man could ever, being what we say, the Christians say it, would die. I said the reason he had to die was to take away our sin. I said he wasn't no uh, third person or second person. He was the same person made flesh in order to take away our sin. I said he, he had to come and make... And I give him the little story I preached on here the night before I left of the bee, you know, how it stings and leaves its stinger, you know, and it can't sting no more. And it had to be human flesh for the, for the bee of death to sting because death is not in the soul. Death is in the spirit, in the flesh. So it had, God had to become uh, a flesh in order to take away the sting of death. Amen. So then when they got to see that, you know, because there's a lot of insects in India, and they were, they were, uh, I said, now look. God can, the very creator, this man in his superstition, looking at the sun, trying to find mercy for his soul, for he knows that he's got to go somewhere when he dies from here. I said, through there, his eyes just went out, and through ignorance he did this. But the very creator who made the sun that he looked at can make sight back into his eyes. I said, will you be willing, sir, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? And we'll forsake all idols and everything else, and we'll serve him as long as you live. If you will, raise your hands. And the poor old fellow raised up his trembling hands. Everything there just nearly wears a piece of loin all around him, you know. And uh, he raised his hands that he would. They never sat when there's church. They never, they never had no seats or nothing. They just lay, lay down or sit down or fall down or pile on one another. Anything they can, you can imagine what it would be like. Just as far as you can see, you know, the people like that. And so... I prayed to the good Lord to give him his sight. And there, by God's grace, that total blind man, the tears began to run down his old gray face and beard, you know, white beard running down like that. And he began to yell something in his own language. And everybody began screaming. And here he went walking out through there, patting everybody like that. He said, hey, a man that had been blind. Amen. Now, Brother Cox and them, I think he's sitting in the back. He can show you letters of, of vindication of these things that's coming in from India. And it just takes long, long, long. But in the way that we had it, I, I couldn't stay. It's, I don't see how I ever got five nights in. If it hadn't been for my boy back there, Billy Paul, the help of God, I don't know how to ever made it. Billy stuck by me. 
And uh, he he take me through, try to get me through, and them people, you know, they're, they're, they're very timid. They don't want to hurt nothing or nothing. And you just have to go over. See, because you get mashed down under the crowd, and we, we wouldn't know, you know, it just tramp you to death. You see, you just have to get through it. So, Amen. well, I'm back home again <clears throat> by God's grace. I could tell more, but it's Sunday school time. I don't want to take up the preaching of the word in a missionary talk. <clears throat> Any care package you have, you want to take advice, send it to India. I'm not nothing against Germany. They're fine people. Against these other people. But brother, sister, we only send them stuff over to build them up and then have another war with them, see? That's right. Let's send it somewhere where it really needs to be. If you got anything to send, send it to India. They're the ones that need it. And um, poor, illiterate. They have natural resource, but haven't got the intelligence to know how to develop it. The only thing they know is beg, and that's what they do. And um, they were going to take me on, you know how well I like hunting. <laughs> they were going to take me on a big bango tiger hunt up there at their expense. I said, do me a favor. Take the same money you spend on it and feed them poor people out there. I'll go home without it, you see. That's right, because I, I can have hunting somewhere else, you see. You ever got any old clothes or anything you want to send over, send it to him. Amen. <laughs> I've almost traveled the world now, and I, I, I know what I'm speaking of, and as a Christian brother, India's in need. Amen. Now, I come home, I fulfilled everything that the Lord has told me to do as far as I know, to the best of my knowledge. This next week, I'm going to tell you a little something happened. I was having dinner with the governor. Is to give me some old rice there with sheep feet cooked in it and seasoned with olive oil. You can imagine it's as flat as it could be. I maybe so sick I couldn't hardly stand it. I just almost ready to vomit. The governor looked over and said, "Sir, I believe you're ill." And I said, "Oh, I, said, I think the food's a little different." When we got to the hotel, here was the governor's private doctor there waiting for me. I said, "I want to examine him." I said, "I'm the governor's private doctor." So I'm all right. You begin, of course, as a gentleman like, he went looking all over me. He said, I think you're all right. Went everything fine until he took my blood pressure. He looked back at me. Said, Aren't you awfully tired? I said, Yes, sir. I began to tell him the effects of the meetings had those visions, you know, breaking into them. I said, I don't see how you're living. I said, I don't want to alarm you, but I said, Your blood pressure is about as low as it can get. <laughs> he said, Your nerves are so weak till it won't pump your blood up. See? That your blood pressure is dangerously low. I said, how long are you going to be here? I said, oh, got two more meetings. He said, well, I advise you to return to America as soon as possible and get some real good doctor to look at you. He said, because I would advise you to have no meetings for a while. See, I told him how that was. Of course, he called it dimensions, you know, breaking from one to the other. And I said, well, sir, when I go home, I said, I have promised the American people that I uh, given the meetings from now on. It wouldn't be that. I said they, I would just pray for the people. See, and cause I see it, it doesn't take effect as it should. I look at my brother O. Roberts and some of those fellows there who has meetings and even get more people saved here in America than I do. It's just something that I believe that I have misused a, a great divine gift of a prophetic gift and used it in a way of divine healing. And I do not think that it's encourage God or cause God to think so much of me and doing so cause it wouldn't have such an effect. He never told me about that people. You know, he said that was once done. He represented even Moses in the same way Moses went on to Egypt and performed his miracles one time. That settled it. He took his hand and healed with leprosy and turned the stick into a snake and back to a stick and that settled it forever. And I think after ten years of crossing America back and forth and combing through every city the people understand that it's Amen. true. It's time to pray for the people. And that's what I intend to do. I have been very, been very nice. You know I love you people. And I love you with undying love. And God knows that. I've had to be in isolation. It's the people across this, this America that I'd love to shake hands with. And have longed to do it in the meetings. I couldn't. See, you don't know what effect that vision has to you. Just as soon as you stand before the person, there it is. See. Now, I just wouldn't say it to the people sometimes, but there it is before the person. I found out things with people I wished I didn't know, people to be my friends, and yet you'd know that it was wrong. God would come down now and permit me. I could tell you things that would be 
surprising to you. And there I have asked the Holy Spirit, if he will, which he's told me, I've asked him if he'd just let me first get myself settled back to a place, to where I was when I left the tabernacle. Just back to there and let me get quietened down. That when I stand before the people, it won't be vision. It'll be like I can talk to the brother and not see his condition. But then it's all for prayer for him. See? Hey, and you're like, I've asked God to do that. I come home. I know this week I, no one has been around the house. It's a good thing. I've been about five days up there. I couldn't even move. I, I have been to a place I raised up, looked like my bones is aching and everything. Of course, it's changed around exactly 11 hours and a half difference between Bombay and here. Right now, it's just about time I, oh, I got to, I've been sleeping an hour or two ago. You see? So it's nighttime. And just change around. And then that weak blood pressure went way down like that. And I just couldn't hardly get up and down. That's all. I brought it on myself, trying to overdo myself. So now I've come back home by God's grace. And now this next week, I'm going away just to stay a while, two or three weeks out to myself, to stay alone, to pray first. I'm going to go hunting, if the Lord willing. But before I do that, it's going to be I'm going a few days before the seasons and so forth. I'm going up into Colorado. I want to stay at least two or three weeks or maybe more. Just to be alone by my real lonesome self. And say, God, here I am. I may have to come down and ask Mr. Mishler for a job again. <laughs> Mr. Mishler, back to public service company. I've, I've fulfilled what he told me to do, and I stand at the tabernacle this morning, just the way I left ten years ago. I have no manager. My manager resigned when the heat was on. I don't have any manager. My boy is leaving. And my boy sitting back there is going to the army. He's been my buddy. He stuck by me. Some of them always fussed at me. Why you got Billy with you? If you'd only know how I pack that boy on my arm when he's a suckling baby. Amen. Without a mother. I kept his bottle under my head at night with no fire in the house. Keep his bottle warm. And fed him. He's been my pal all the way along. We're going to die that way, if God willing. Probably go to the Army right away. He got papers yesterday to make his decision where he wants to be, volunteer or, or be drafted. Well, I won't have him. And then I, I'm by myself, but not by myself. There's one who brought me from my mother, who's fed me, who's taken me through these deep trials. His grace has brought me safe thus far. I'm trusting that to take me on through. And I have come to a place that where I want to ask the church one more thing before we get someplace to study in the scriptures. That is that you'll pray for me. I've developed a critical spirit. And it haunts at me. I told my wife yesterday the first time something happened out. I was sitting in the yard and I told her she'd reminded me and I told her about it. I said, Honey, I've got to a place that I've become critical of people. I don't want to be there. Who, whose job is it? It's not mine. God's the one to criticize, not me. There's a woman went over there, Miss Dowd. I don't know where they ever heard of her or not. Oh, such a disgrace it was in India. That's the reason we couldn't even have her meetings in the open air. She got over there and tried to take offerings from them people. And, and, and she, because they wouldn't give their little rupees, a poor little woman's got a job packing mortar on top of her head up steps and things like that from 5 o'clock to 10 o'clock, gets a rupee a day at 21 cents. They, she has to work hard to keep that job. A woman weighed in mud to their knees and so forth. Poor little old thing. Take care of her little babies and so forth. A rupee. 21 cents. And they're fussing with them people and taking those rupees and turning them back into American money. And they said, you come to take what we got, not to help us. See, you people, they didn't have to give me a penny to go over, come back, pay my expenses, pay all auditorium rents, all hotel bills, everything. And then everything I had left, I took it on the street, not to give it to some society. I took it out and gave it to the poor little people that's starving to death. That's where your money went. That's where your money went. Exactly. The best of my knowledge. I could do it myself. I only wish I'd have had more. To do it with. Now, but my, my, my brother, sister, this woman started taking up offerings and fussing at him. They said, you come to take what we got, not to help us. I thought you come to help us. You're supposed to be a divine healer. 
She's angry with me. When it's over in the West Coast, Howard, she said, I want to see your daddy. She married some man from down there in Egypt or something. She said, I'm going to India too. She said, well, madam, when that anointing's on him, we, the people just don't come around. So she said, you tell him that I'm Mrs. Dowler. And said, when I'm going to India before him, I'll have the situation under control when he gets there. Said, my meaning is greater than he ever had anyhow. Well, that's true. Might be. I don't know. But to think she had it under control to a place that you couldn't even have a meeting in the open air. That's what it was. And they, they started around and she stood there and said, you black devils, you. Said, I don't like that. And they tried to get her to get out and she wouldn't do it. And somebody hit her on the head with a brick and they packed her out. So they, then they rushed her out of the country and she went out into another country there and Baron Blomberg had to go down and see the king and things to get her out of there to keep from a massacre. So then, um, uh, so they, there it was. And I look at that and I criticize that. I come back and I first thing is placing my hands with the voice of healing. I've seen this A.A. Allen's meeting. I've seen how unscriptural that is. Then I criticize it, you see. Oh, my. I think, but look at the poor people, lovely people's out there following that, see. Going with them and honest-hearted people. I look around and see these other things as it goes on. And in that, I, I start criticizing in my heart, see. And I don't want to get that way. If I do that, I'll lose favor with God. See, and the only thing, and I look at the Americans and see the way, they look at women, how they dress, and look at men, how they act, and how they drink, and cuss, and smoke, and chew, and claim to be Christians, because it just nauseates me. When I see what the other side is, and see this, and then look between, and think, oh God. But here, listen, whose battle is it? God said, let the weeds and the wheat grow together. The angels would come and separate them at the end of time. Amen. It's not me. So you help me, as I stay here my hand up at the pulpit, help me to criticize nobody, and help me that God will give me his spirit in my heart, that he, instead of criticizing it, I'll love him anyhow and go on. It's just been a constant grind and a grind and a grind, because I'm just human, my mental powers are breaking like that, you see, and I've got to get away for some rest, and that's what I'm going away for, to stay by myself. To pray that God will take that critical feeling away from me and mellow me down. Now, I could go and act like it, but that wouldn't come from my heart. And I'd be a hypocrite then, sure enough. See, I want it to come from my heart. And I really have love for those who are not lovely. That's Jesus did. When I was critical, when I need to be criticized, still, he still loves me anyhow. So that's the way I want to be. You pray for me. Yeah. Hope to see you again long about November. Maybe you come back and hold a revival here at Tabernacle before we... Amen. Amen. Now here's one thing I've done. I ask this. One more thing. I have... Don't want to have ministering to the sick. No more than just by handkerchiefs or so forth. I'm trying to get away from that vision, you see. And especially as a week as I am now, you go to stand before people, well, then you start, that, that vision comes back. I want to get away and get myself quietened down to where I can come forth and have a different meeting. You'll pray for me, won't you? Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm praying in, in the mail and sending handkerchiefs and things to the sick and sick afflicted. But when people call me for prayer, I'm referring them to Brother Neville or some of the rest of them to go pray. Because when I stand before the person, that shakes me right back to it again, you see. I want to get away from it so I can and lay down to now, Lord, just at your will. Whenever you want me to do anything, you let me know, and I'll keep it a secret to myself, unless you tell me to tell it. See what I mean? And then go out and pray for the sick and change my ministry altogether. I have longer meetings, better meetings, and everything else Amen. than it could before. The Lord bless you now while we bow our head. Heavenly Father, we thank thee this morning for the time of talking of missions and how that you have blessed us and helped us and how many times have I thought when the waves was rolling high and the great trials was on, would I ever be back home again? But here, here I am again. Lord, you always bring me back. I thank you for this church, for its pastor, for its people's blessings. And now, Father, this morning, uh, my heart looks across there to India and thinking, laying out there on that street this morning, all down along the side of that shore, down in those little haunts down there, those poor, hungry, starving, uneducated people, not knowing the Lord Jesus, worshiping some kind of a superstition or an idol. Then, Father, how thankful I am to know that you've let me know you, to know his life. 
Then I pray that you'll help me take the critical spirit from my servant, Lord. God, I don't want to, if the men are wrong, you be the judge, Lord. Let me just love anyhow. Will you, Father, if the women misdress and misuse themselves and become prostitutes and our nation sinks, how can I change history when you've spoke it, Lord? But I pray that you will just help me and let me be loving and kind, that I can be your servant and do your will. These things I ask, Father, for your glory. Now bless us as I've been asked to teach the Word a little. Father, just give us a little short message now that the Word may go forth, that it'll be a great day for us. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Now, i got quarter eleven. Is that right? Well, can we have about 35 minutes? Will that be all right? And get out about 11.30? Now, where we go? I was sitting here thinking about teaching out of the Old Testament. But well, you usually, I just... You get the Old Testament all the time. So if somebody said, Brother Brad, don't you know anything about the Old Testament? Well, it's good when I learn that, then I learn the new one. <laughs> but when you learn one, you learn them both. Yeah. They're both together. But let's turn over to the New Testament somewhere. I don't know where y'all been studying or nothing. Let's, um, I tell you, let's hear St. John. Let's go back to the first of St. John and begin to read St. John. Now that's just, I'm just turned over to it. I don't know. So we'll just start the study in St. John. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah. All right, St. John, the first chapter. And now maybe this coming Wednesday night, I heard I want to be with you tonight. I want to come down and, and, um, and be with you tonight. And then Wednesday night also, I think that we won't leave before Wednesday. So I'll be here Wednesday night. I'm pretty sure it'll be next Thursday or Friday one before we get away. So then I'll be here Wednesday night, the Lord willing, for service. And now we want to, to teach some maybe Wednesday night, the Lord willing. Say, Brother Fleeman, that's just a good idea. Just take off your coat now and feel at home. Has anybody got anything against anybody? If you have, raise up your hand and go to them. Now, let's just make this one great big old love feast this morning. What do you say? Everybody and whatever you have, if the person's not here, let's say, Lord Jesus, let's put it under the blood right now, and from this day henceforth, I'll think of it no more. I'll just go and let everything begin anew now. Oh, if you only knew how how happy you ought to be in all the religions of the world to see them every one just as bottomless as they can be and only one is real. Amen. That's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Regardless if it comes from Methodist Church, Baptist Church, Presbyterian Church, the Lord Jesus Christ is right. Amen. See, no matter where it comes from, Christianity Outshines, it's the only thing that's got a foundation in all. Other things, the blood sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only hope of the world. Amen. Now, I've seen their religions, I've seen their idols, I've seen their superstitions, I've seen their gods and all, and every studied them and studied the, the Koran by everything that I know to study. And out of it, every bit, it becomes superstitions and it just Amen. makes you appreciate so Amen. real. Oh, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the only hope of the world. And he's the only one that ever raised from the dead. Amen. And we can prove that He raised from the dead. Amen. And he lives today. How wonderful. Amen. Amen. Oh, my brother Amen. You don't know how happy I am to be a Christian. Oh, you should be so happy. Amen. Now, this great gospel of St. John here, according to the St. John... John was the beloved. Amen. We believe that St. John was the, the beloved one who leaned on Jesus' bosom and, and so forth. He lived to be the oldest of the apostles, or lived longer than any of the rest of them. Yeah. And he, um, he uh, Peter was crucified with his head turned down, his feet up. Andrew was crucified with his hands sideways like this and nailed. I've uh, seen down there where the... Beheaded St. Paul there at Rome. Say, I've got some oil. I'll try to bring that the next time I come. The pictures of all that martyrdom and everything and the feeding to the lions and so forth. They got all in a big folder. I'll bring it down. And put one on one pole, one on the other, and so forth, so you can see them and look them over. All in English. Notice. Oh, what a heartbreaking sight. Where they cut Paul's head off there, dumped him out in a sewer. Hey. Oh, oh, my. The axe never no more touched his head till he was in glory. Amen. Hey. 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 
No wonder he stood there in his cell when he wrote, Oh, death, where is your stained grave? Where is your Amen. victory? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He wrote, said, I have fought a good fight. I finished Amen. the course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's a crown of righteousness made up for me that the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me that day. Amen. Oh, why it makes you think. Lives of great men all remind us, and we can make our lives sublime. But partings leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Amen. Amen. Now, John, the beloved, the revelator, and John, there's several Johns here in the Bible, but the John St. John, the one we're speaking of this morning, the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, a missionary sent out by God, a missionary is a one that is sent. I've often wondered how the people today say, oh, there's only 12 apostles. The only 12, you've heard that. Well, the very word itself means one that is sent. Paul was not an apostle, according to the 12. But did you ever notice? They chose Mathenius, I believe it was, or Matthias, to take Judas's place, and that's what man done. He never hear no more of him. But God chose Paul to take his place. You see? Look what Paul did. See, it shows the difference between the choosing of man and the choosing of God. Amen. And that makes, gives me a lot of grace in my heart towards uh, things and arrows and so forth. Just listen a few moments ago on the radio, this great, famous Dr. Dehan, marvelous teacher, my lovely brother, love him with all my heart. God knows that. Just to see, just to see how a great man can make arrows. And I thought, just as soon, brothers, I've seen the arrow he's making, I thought, God, I'll make the same things, perhaps, so you look over mine. Dr. Dehan said baptism was only one time in the Bible. Just listen, as it come to church this morning. said the Holy Ghost baptism baptized every one of the apostles, immersed them in the room, and we're baptized the water to represent that. And that's the only time that they were ever baptized with the Holy Ghost, one time only in the Bible. I thought, oh, Dr. Dehan. Why, about ten days later, Philip went out and preached to the Samaritans. He baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus, only the Holy Ghost hadn't come on them yet. Peter went out and laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. About two months or three months after that, Peter was on a house top and had a vision. Went up in the uh, up to Cornelius' house, and they were all standing there, and they were one accord and praying. And while Peter spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Like it did at the beginning, and they had been baptized with water yet. He said, he said Can a man forbid water, see if these have been baptized, has received the Holy Ghost like we did at the beginning? So, how did that one little body there represent? Oh, no, no. no. About several years later, some 20 years later, Paul, having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus, he finds certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? They said, We know not where there be any Holy Ghost. He said, Have you been baptized? How was you baptized? He said unto John, said, John baptized unto repentance, then it should believe on him to come on the Lord Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized over with water in the name of the Lord Jesus, and he laid hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came up on them. Same way as it did at the beginning. Oh, yes. Holy Ghost baptism, water baptism exists right on and will be till Jesus comes again. Yeah. What an era. See, what an era for a great smart scholar like that. It goes to show no matter how smart you are, how much you know, you're human and you're going to error, just as sure as the world. Amen. The battle belongs to the Lord. That's right. Amen. 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 I see things. Even in visions and things, the Lord has showed me and turned right back around and do vice versa. You imagine, and God showed me. I asked him in Lisbon, I said, Lord, just take your hand off of me. I'm not even worthy to be your servant. To see something he told me, and I forgot all about it. went right up and it happened. I thought, oh, my. That, why didn't I remember that? See, here I had it rolled down in my pocket here on a piece of paper. And uh, walked right in and done something vice versa, you see. There it shows how much of a, how much, how good I am, you see. Not all the worst of all of them. I mean, me. For after God tell you to do something and you turn right around and do something by subversity, that's terrible. See? Oh, yeah. So you see, no matter who the man is, he's nothing but a human being. He, he's going to make you safe. So let's just suffer with one another and do the best we can. That's the only thing we can. All right. John, now, first verse. Everybody got your Bibles open? In the beginning. Oh, see, this is good, isn't it? To start with. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Listen, the same was in the beginning with God. 
Say, let's take on down here the 14th verse. I've taught on this so many times and thought it. Look. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Look. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning. Now let's get some real... Here I see something the Holy Spirit must have ordained this to be so. See? I see a great thing here. In the beginning was the Word. Now you can't go any farther back, mentally speaking, than in the beginning. In the beginning, before there was a world, before there was a star... Before there was a sun, moon, anything else, before there was any creation, that's in the beginning. Is that right? Amen. Now, as far as we can go, is back to the beginning. And in the beginning, God was, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Then the Word was Jesus Christ. Amen. Is that right? Oh, my. Then who was in the beginning was Jesus Christ. Amen. Then in our Catholic thoughts of the eternal sonship, there could not be. For if He was the Son of God, He had to have a beginning of time. He had to be born off of to be a son. Is that right? Amen. If He was the Son of God. Oh, we'll wind ourselves out here in the good old Scripture. I just love it. You, you feel at home when you get into it, you know. Don't you love it? In the beginning was the Word. Hey. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Yeah. The Word itself was God. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld Him in the glory of the Father. You see, we beheld the Word that was in the beginning become flesh here on earth. Now, what a marvelous thing to think that God made flesh to take away sin. Now, if we could get the superstitions of the world, how they worship and want to become good, and certain other denominations there of their uh, sects, they think if a man becomes real good, he becomes a god. And he, he, he is a god then. And they worship him and, uh, as god. And then another reason they worship it, it can't hardly be taught in a, in a mixed audience like this because the germ of life comes out of the male, you see. And they think that life lays in it an eternal life, perpetual life, coming through the male from one to another. We've always been here. We've always been the same spirit moving over and over in people, you see. And therefore they worship the man because out of him comes the germ of life. Now, but here it tells us that before there was a man, Amen. before in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word made flesh. Now, just about as far as the human mind can go, that's as far as we can go back now to the beginning. Is that right? Amen. In the beginning was the Word. But now, that's as far as we can go by theology. That's as far as we can go by our mind. But revelation carries us beyond that. Amen. Now, if you're teaching something on theology, you say, in the beginning was the Word, that was God, and the Word was God, that's right, and this same Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. See? And then God was made flesh. That's without controversy. That's true. God was made flesh. We believe that. But now, before this was Word, what is a Word? A Word is a manifestation of a thought. Amen. Is expression of a thought. Is that right? Amen. Before you say anything, subconsciously, you think it before you speak it. Amen. Is that right? Amen. So, in the beginning was the Word, that's as far as we can go back by this, by theology, but before the Word was, it was a thought. Amen. And the thought was made manifest. Amen. You see what I mean? Amen. Now, that's how that he said, first 
he taught and he spoke the word and the word was made manifest. Amen. Oh, how infallible God is. Notice every thought when it's spoken with Jesus, no wonder when he come off the hill that night and looked around that tree for food. There was no there was no fruit on the tree. And he said, No man eateth from thee. And he went on away. And the next day coming back, the tree withered. God's mind, the man that in the beginning that was a thought before it was a word that expressed Jesus Christ, the same one was expressing that word back again. Amen. See? And every word in the Bible is God's thoughts laid in seed form that if received into the human being and spoke by the same thought that materialized the Bible brings the thing to pass. Amen. Do you want to mean? How powerful could the church be? The Bible says, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Amen. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. Now your thoughts, if they become expressions, like God said, let there be a world. Before it could be a word, it had to be a thought. So God, in the creation, created the world by his thought first, then expressions. Spoke it and the thought expressed became material. Amen. You know what I mean? Now, if that same spirit that said, let there be life, and there was life, that said, let there be trees, and there was trees, if that same mind that was in Christ be in you, how much could it say, let there be no cancer, and it would be gone? Amen. Let the blind eyes be open, and it would be so. Amen. See? If it's your thought, Jesus said, barely, he said, that was Jesus, but wait a minute. He said, have faith in God, for barely, barely, I say unto you, if you shall say to this mountain, be moved, plucked up, and cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, you will have whatever things thou say. Church is power. Oh. A 
healing and he's moving. Amen. You see what I mean? Yeah. Then your thoughts will become words and words will become material. Amen. That's when the church in his power, I believe it's on its road. Yeah. Yeah. That when the church will be so wrapped in Christ, the Holy Spirit, mankind so away from their cells that they don't see themselves, they don't have no more but the Spirit of God. When their thoughts move on, they refuse the things of the world. They just move in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Move in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. So fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Then the love of Christ in the human heart moving in the Holy Ghost, that great, wonderful church will go forth with power and deity because deity will be revealed in human beings Amen. by the Holy Spirit. Bringing the path, the thought of their mind. Our thoughts run different. A lot of times we walk up and say, how do you do, brother? And you don't mean it in your heart. A lot of times we say, I am this and that. I'll do that. You don't mean it in your heart. See, I don't mean it in my heart. But when you can become so dead to the things of the world that Christ is first, Christ is all, then your entire makeup is of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, he has full control. Amen. That's when your thoughts will be clean. Your thoughts will be pure. Amen. Your heart your heart. Many people say, well, religion comes from your heart. There's no mental faculties in that little being called heart. You can't think with your heart. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can't think with your heart. You can't because there's nothing mental in there to think with. Jesus wasn't speaking of the physical being. He was speaking of the supernatural being. We are a threefold being, soul, body, spirit. We know that what this flesh is, we realize that. It's here. We know what the spirit is that controls the flesh. But what is the soul? The soul is the nature of the spirit. Amen. When a man's converted, it doesn't mean that here's a good, deep teaching. I hope you get it. Some time ago, I was just telling some boys the other day, a man sat on my porch and he said, Brother Brown, I was once a businessman and I spent years trying to get saved and tell me all these troubles. That his wife went out and got the spirit, and she could he couldn't get the spirit. I said, "What do you mean, brother?" And he told me where he was from, and expressed himself. He said, "I said you're trying to get saved." He said, "Yes, I'm trying to get saved." And I said, "The Lord once said, I believe I've crossed the line, brother Branham, where you can't get saved." I said, "Oh, I don't know." He said, "Look, I went to Billy Graham's meeting, a great famous preacher, and he is a wonderful man of God, doing a great work for God." And he said. I went to his meetings, and he told all that wants to be saved, raise up your hands. And so I raised my hand up. They went into the inquiry room. So then he told me back there, I had to accept Jesus. And said, so I got on and prayed. And he told me, now, you believe in Jesus Christ? I said, yes. Said, I accepted him as personal Savior. Said, he said, now you're saved. So nothing happened to me. Said, I went then for a couple of years, and I found the free Methodist people who said I had to get happy enough to shout. And said they prayed over me and everything, so I got happy enough to shout. Said so they said, now you got it. You got sanctification. Said so I went out and said, I searched it for all I could, said so I still didn't have it. Said so I went to Brother Roberts' meeting. Or Roberts. He said they went into the room and told me I had to receive the Holy Ghost, I had to speak with tongues, or I didn't have it. Said so I went back in there and they got prayed on me and, and told me to talk to the Lord and, and said I, I spoke with tongues. He said, Brother Rank, I still ain't got it. He said, I don't know what to do. I said, now, my brother. He said, I've been down to Shreveport, the voice of healing. And they told me that you were the prophet to come up here and you'd be able to reveal to me uh, when the Spirit come on him. What was my trouble? I said, brother, you don't have to be a prophet to do that. The Word of God settles that. I said, it don't need prophecy. I said, my brother, the only thing, you're just confused. I said, I want to ask you something. Did you always love the Lord Jesus? He said, well, I, I belong to the Presbyterian Church, but said, I just went there. I said, well, I want to ask you, what happened, what taken place that you changed your mind all at once? He said, well, my wife, she went down to the Pentecostals and said she got the spirits. And said, then she come back up and said she it was happy. And said, I said, what did you think about that? Did you criticize it? He said, no. He said, I just thought, well, I'll see how it lasts. And said, it went on and said, she seemed to have it. And said, one day I was coming in from making a sale out in the yard, and I had to reach in my pocket, and somebody had given me a little old track. 
instead of sit down in the office and begin to read this tract, and said, the office feeling come over me that I ought to get right with God. He said, I've been searching ever since. I said, I want to ask you something. When this feeling come over you, you've never been able to get out of it. He said, no, sir, I haven't. I said, well, that's when you receive Christ. I said, it doesn't mean raising up your hands. That's all right. Speaking in tongues, that's all right. I said, shouting, that's all right. But that's the attributes of Christ after he's come in. I said, to receive Christ is to receive the person Christ Jesus. To receive him is life. I said, shouting, speaking in tongues, and all demonstrations. I said, that is attributes that follows this. But first is to receive Christ. Amen. He said, then, Brother Brown, I've been saved all the time. I said, sure. Look. I said, do you love him? He said, with all my heart. I said, one time you didn't love him. He said, that's right. And now you love him. He said, well, that's the truth. <laughs> well, you've had him all the time. And he jumped off the porch again, crying and holding me in his arms and saying, oh, God, I've been a Christian all these years. You see, the thing of it was he wasn't straightened out in the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. You couldn't make a lamb out of a pig if you had to. He's a pig you begin with. He tends to his own business and tells the lamb to take care of his own business. The only way that you can make that pig believe that it's wrong to be in the pig pen would put a lamb spirit in him. Yeah. If he ever gets a lamb's soul in him, or a lamb ain't got no soul, but if he ever gets a lamb's spirit in him, the very nature of the thing, that's the reason you can't make, convert a pig. You can't convert a lamb because he, he's got no soul. What he is in his spirit, he's got that same nature forever. See? But a human being can be changed from a pig to a lamb yeah. because he's got a soul made in the image of God. Yeah. Amen. When his thoughts change, yeah. something does it for yeah. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. Yeah. See, Christ the Creator come to him in a still form and created his own spirit, took the man's nature away to love dancing in the world and carrying on. And from that time he just laid it aside and was hungering after God and God was in him all the time. Amen. It was God in the beginning. Amen. See? The there you are. Amen. Amen. As a man thinketh, it has to become a thought before it can become a word. And a word express material. Amen. Amen. I believe in my heart that I am a Christian because I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If I don't cry, if I don't move, if I don't do a thing, in my heart first, I believe that Christ died for me in my sin. Amen. Amen. I accept it as a Christian. Yeah. I believe it as a Christian. Then it's in my heart. Then I express it in a word. I am a Christian. Hallelujah. Then I start walking as a Christian, talking as a Christian, Amen. living as a Christian, being as a Christian, and by my fruits I'm recognized by the world as a Christian. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Say, I didn't aim to get that loud, but I... But there it is. God's Word. Jesus said, here it is. Oh, just tell me when I'm alone with us. Um, when Jesus said this, look, in the beginning... Notice, see, a man, as he thinketh in his heart. Now, listen to what Jesus said. We won't get, oh, if you'd only travel around and see the religion, and one has to do this, and one has to do that, and one has to do that. But, brother, let's let this old tabernacle, one time, let's get straightened out forever. Amen. We are Christians by faith and grace of God. We are Amen. Christians. Hallelujah. God, in His infant mercy, called us to be reconciled to Him to His Son, Christ Jesus. Oh, Tells it. Thank you, Jesus. Not what we done, what He did. Yes. He changed my soul Amen. from the things of the world until the things of God. Hallelujah. From horse races and gambling and adultery and lying and stealing. He changed my soul. Oh, change my thoughts. And then my thoughts become so real till they become words in my lips. And they materialize, and now I am a Christian. It made me a different person. That's what made you. See? Now, if you've got a devil mind, and you don't believe it, you say, well, I just wonder. You better watch out. You say, well, brother, I, I had a good time. I don't care how much good time you had. 
Say, well, I shouted, that's good, but that still don't mean it. Say, I spoke the tongue, that's good, but I, I still don't mean it. Amen. You say, I heal the sick, that still don't mean it. Uh, Jesus said, many will come to me in that day and say, have not cast out devils in your name, done mighty things. You say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Amen. I don't even know you. Yes, sir. Yep. Paul said, though I uh, speak with tongue and man and angel, though I have faith to move mountains, though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and have my charity, I am nothing. Amen. It's got to be a change. Here it is. A change of heart. Amen. Not this physical thing, but the heart of your soul. Amen. In something angers to your thoughts. That way is dull. You don't see that anymore. You just see the Lord Jesus. You see righteousness and holiness and purity and love and grace. That's when you've been changed. Amen. What is a convert? Convert means to change something over. Amen. And your thoughts, your habits, your being has been changed from a sinner to a Christian. Amen. First thing, you know it in your heart. Amen. Then you express it with your lips. And then it materializes, and that's what you are. Amen. Now, if you think that you think it, what a word. <laughs> but you imagine you think it, and you express it, and it doesn't materialize, then you're on the wrong road. Amen. Amen. You get it? Hey, I've heard that talk to the floor. Look, if you imagine you're a Christian, and you speak it out with your lips, but you find out that you're not, you better get your thoughts changed. Amen. Get your heart changed. Yes. See? Because it doesn't bear the record. It doesn't bear fruit of it. Oh, but the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, peace, long-suffering, goodness, mercy, faith. If every little thing comes along you fly at that, better be careful. Amen. There's something that hasn't happened. You're expressing something here that's not here. Jesus said to the Pharisees, You hypocrites, how can you say good things? That's what made them a hypocrite. They thought one thing in their heart and expressed their lips with something else. A hypocrite is that, that's what makes a hypocrite. But how can you be a hypocrite? For out of abundance of the heart speaketh the mouth. Amen. You don't speak what you really think. Yeah. It, see what I mean? Amen. You must say what you think. Amen. If you don't think it, don't say it. See? Speak your words. Let them be come from the bottom of your heart. Like Jesus said to that tree, no man he is from thee. Why, there wasn't a, wasn't a shadow of doubt in his whole heart. What, that tree would wither away. Why, wow. his heart was coming from pure, from his, the Spirit of God in him that was making him that way. Amen. Teaching those disciples the lesson. See what I mean? All right. Then let that be pure. Let your thoughts run pure. And your expression's pure. Live pure and be pure. Now, out of your heart proceedeth evil thinking, adultery, and all these different things. If that comes out of your heart, that's what's in your heart. But if out of your heart comes righteous, peace, love, joy, oh my, then it's coming from a resource here that's made up of that. See what I mean? It's made up of the Spirit of God here that's expressed itself through the words, and what you say then will come to pass. Amen. I'll give you a little insight of something. How infallible God's Word is. Watch what you're saying. When God speaks anything, it has to be, I don't care how much different it looks, I've seen things like in this very itinerary just now. I've seen God do something, friends that I thought was impossible for it to ever happen. But it happened. Amen. After I'd done seeing the mistake of something I made, was a mistake, was forced to have done something, God told me to go do it, got it over here in my pocket. Instead of doing that, I forgot about it and turned around and done something else. And the grace of God brought it right back and took it to you anyhow. Amen. Amen. It's got to happen. Well, I'll be here in St. John. I just read the other day somewhere here, the same thing about, let's see, that's 12. Yeah, here it is. Look, St. John 12 and the 37th verse, listen. 36 we've been. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. These things spake Jesus and departed and, and did hide himself from them. Now listen. 
Here it is. Now watch this real close. I got it marked here. I was reading it in, in, over in Bombay. But though he, he had done so many miracles before them, see, yet they believed not on him. No matter what he had done, he performed miracles. Look at this nation. Look at this people. Look what signs and wonders has happened right here in this tabernacle. Look what things has been said and what's been proved to be of God. Amen. Look, Amen. Proved of God. And yet the people in the city will laugh at it. Amen. Make fun of it. Say it's mental telepathy or something or another. They don't understand. Listen here. Though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled which spake, Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said this. Amen. Amen. When God speaks anything, it's got to happen. Amen. Amen. For it's his thought first, then his words express that it's nothing, no matter what comes or goes, it's got to happen. Amen. Oh, can you see the infallibility of the Word? Amen. Oh, my. He has blinded their eyes. He has hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts and be converted and I should heal them. Amen. Look, God, through His prophet, Isaiah, a man who had his ups and downs like we do, had mistakes like we do. But um, God got that man so yielded by being a prophet that his words, God's thoughts, hallelujah, Amen. God's thoughts expressed through those mortal lips of Isaiah. Amen. A man was seeing the same as I have, with his ups and downs like I have and like you have. But a yielded vessel to God Express the talk God's talk to words. And no matter what they done, Isaiah's words had to be fulfilled. Amen. For it was God's talk expressed to Isaiah. Amen. There you are. Hallelujah. Oh, God, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Oh, my. When the world is no more, Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Yeah. Why, he was expressing in word the thought of Almighty God. And when we by faith can accept that word, it's got to become material. Yeah. Oh, God, kill my heart to think thy word forever in heaven, Lord, is confirmed. What God's thoughts is, he expresses it in words, and here is the living word of God. Amen. Jesus said, He that hears my words and believes on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but pass from death unto life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Not he that goes to church. Not he that puts his name on the book. Not he that professes. Not he that shouts. Not he that heals the sick. Not he that opens the blinded eyes. Not he that speaks with the tongues. Not he that prophesies. But he that heareth my words and believeth. On him that sent me hath everlasting life. And shall never come into condemnation, but already passed from death unto life. Oh, brother, let that faith anchor on time in the heart. So them words will be true before God. Amen. When heavens and earth will shake and go away, but that eternal word, that thought that's in your Amen. heart, that's expressed by God, can no more fail than Isaiah's words could fail. Amen. There's the thousands looking at them miracles as done and yet could not believe because Isaiah had expressed it and said they will not believe it. Amen. God's word is eternal. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the Word was God. God, in the beginning, back there, when He's seen the world, He's seen you and I here this morning. He's seen my baby sitting back under. He's seen every hungry person in India. Amen. He's seen every preacher in the pulpit. He's seen every hypocrite walking. 
He seen the whole thing, the infant mind of God for sight. And he said, now to redeem that fallen race, I'll send forth my son, Christ Jesus. There was the word. In the beginning, before it was a word, it was a thought. Before it was a thought, it was expressed in a word. And the word become material and dwell among us. Hallelujah. Ten million years, baby, before the word was ever formed. God's thought, see his body tabernacle in flesh. Amen. The biggest thing out of death. Yes. How eternal is the word of God. Oh, times will change. Years will come and go. He on the time will pass away. But God's word will remain forever. Amen. Oh, Lord, let me hide your word in my heart that I sin not against you. Let me meditate in day and night. Let me write your commandments upon my bedpost. And let them always be before me. For Lord, I sin not in my heart against you. But let me walk in there is therefore now no condemnation. Romans 8. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. 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 God's express thoughts into the human heart moves right on as the immortal God leads his subject from place to place in the Bible says the footsteps of the righteous man is ordered of the Lord. Oh my eternity when we think of the word of God expressed through the lips of a mortal being yet so submissive to the word of God he said Isaiah spoke of them and they could not do it because Isaiah had said it under inspiration oh, Jesus Christ the Emmanuel here on earth with all the scriptures from everywhere as he walked on the earth he knew that he was going to raise up the third day why because faith was under inspiration so I don't need his soul in hell neither I serve my holy he said, therefore, my heart rejoiced when my flesh is made, uh, have made glad. Amen. But Jesus, under one word, unction, speak, spoke by God, through a man that had his ups and downs, David. Yeah. David said, I will not leave his soul in hell. Neither will I suffer my holy one to see corruption. Jesus said, carry on this table, I'll raise it up in three days. Amen. Hallelujah. He believed the immortal word of God. Yes, sir. No matter, he didn't, he didn't say that. He said, well, he never, he died on Friday and been raised up for about three days. Jesus knew in 72 hours comes moral, comes corruption to the body. He knew sometime between those three days, sometime in there, God was going to raise it up. Amen. Because David, under inspiration, said that he raised it up. Amen. Hallelujah. One scripture in all the Bible. He walked far as a hero to death, knowing that God would keep his word. Once God spoke first and then expressed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So today, I believe that that Lord Jesus that is yeah. in the house yeah. is coming again. Yeah. Yeah. He's, coming yeah. for, he's coming for the redeemed that's born again. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, if he went away, so shall he come. It's expressed yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. Kings may rise, differs may come, hunger may struck the earth, famine, atomic bombs, and whatever it is. Yeah. But Jesus, the Son of God, will come again in like manner. As you see him go, for it's God's inspired word that said so. I truly believe that the God will heal the body of the sick because he said he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace upon him and with his Christ. We were healed. Let teachers, theology, whatever it might be, raised at the seminaries, rise and fall. But God's word will move just the same. Yes, sir. God said so. Amen. And before God could say it, it had to be a thought. Amen. God thought the whole thing through and expressed it in his words and it had to materialize. Amen. Yeah. Not long ago I was reading or seen a priest where a girl was putting his dials on a watch, getting it in the radium, and she let him lick this, the brush to her tongue. He killed her. Years and years later, they dug up her skull. And they put their scopes in their ears and things and stuck it down on the skull. And you can hear that radio. Brr, brr, brr. It has no end. It just keeps moving on and on and on and on, on. There's no end to radio. It keeps moving on. After years and years and years and the skull was up in a white bone, the radio was still moving through there because she picked it into her mouth. A folded it up like that and radium moves on. How much more then will the eternal God to his Godhead being and the spoken powers of his word when he speaks his word? Times will change, people will change, nations will change, worlds will change, but that 
word moves on and on forever and ever because it's God's talk before it's expressed. Hallelujah. I love him with all my heart. Now that you're seeing the hundreds of religions of this world will say this morning, oh Christ, oh, rock us. Yeah. All other grounds is Satan's yeah. All other grounds is Satan's sand. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, oh how happy I am this morning to know that by redeeming grace thy son has redeemed us from a life of sin. For hey. always I see my own body withering away, getting old, turning gray and wrinkling up. Yet I know that beyond this shadow here, yonder lays the body not made with hands. Yonder lays the immortal one waiting that someday when the life is pulled from this body, it'll awaken you in his presence, yonder, to be with him through the ages of time. God, let every man and woman this morning that has this hope in them purify themselves from the things of the world. And these little old petty things that would drag them down and keep them miserable, let them be happy Christians serving thee. Grant these things, Father, through Jesus' name, thy Son. Amen. Amen. I think I went just a little bit over time for you, but my heart got carried away Amen. on his word, on his being. I come unprepared, and I know what he's going to speak. Just had to say these words, and I didn't get but one verse out of the scripture, but maybe in a few Sundays we pick it up from there and go on with what the word was. Amen. You love him? Amen. Listen, my Christian friend. If there is an ought in your heart against anyone, go to them now and be reconciled. Forget all the past. And if you've been having an up and down life, remember, something's come into that heart. Something's moved into those thoughts. No matter who your enemy is, love him. Love him. No matter what's happened, let it go. After all, you're in a field of weeds, we realize that. But we must both grow together. We've got to come up together. For a good well cannot pour forth evil waters, neither can an evil well pour forth good waters. A tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit and good fruit at the same time. So let's either make the whole well clean or make the whole well dirty, one of the other things. Or it is dirty to begin with. So let's clean out the wells this morning and say, Lord, pour in your spirit and lead me, oh God, lead me. For see how we, going down into a, a Catholic church over there, down there in Rome, well, they won't take me to the, what they call the bone church. And they're monks for the hundreds of years. They take them and put them in the ground, down in the church, and bury them. Every church is a graveyard nearly. And they get those cells in there. And after they're in there so long, they go dig them up. After the flesh is rotted away into the dust, they dig them up. And they made a room many, many times bigger than this, just out of human bones. How they made them and stacked them together. And on the corners where you walk down like this, the skulls and everything, the light fixtures are made out of little pieces of the fingers and bones. The lights are made out of bones and everything. Nothing but just there's a graze of others rotting away. A sign of the end, very striking, said, one time we were as you, and sometime you'll be as we. That's right. No, we don't. You love God. Will ever have immortal life. And that's true. Now I notice there were people coming through Catholic religions, the whole lot on superstitions and things. Them skulls, all them monks there had rubbed till they were white. Some crowded over that deep. But the people were rubbing them, trying to get blessings and things like that off the skulls of these monks. It only goes to show it's a human being. It's a heart and they're hungry for something. Brother, the religion of Jesus Christ doesn't insist of rubbing dead man's bones. It bleeds the Lord Jesus Christ. He's taking immortal life. Oh my, but to think that is true. One time those men are we are here this morning. They had their opportunity, and we've got ours. What are you going to do with it? Amen. Oh, make every ounce of it count for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Have no time for things of the world. Let us try to wait with these leaders such as Let's run this race with patience that's set before us. Amen. Let's love the Lord Jesus. Be kind to one another. Be kind to your enemies. Love everybody. No matter what they've done, love them anyhow. And if you can't do that, Brother, sister, if there ever was a time then you need a case of the order, it's then when you can come back free. Now I recognize the other day a selfish spirit coming up to me. I said, this man's wrong. I ought to tell him about it. That's wrong. God's the one to tell him about it. That's not son of my business. But my business is preach the gospel and love everybody and move on and love my enemies as Jesus Christ loved me when I was his enemy. That's right. When I was unlovely, he, he, he loved me to his bosom. And anybody's unlovely, let me love them the same. Let the spirit that was in Christ be in us. Amen. Amen. I love him. I love him. Amen. Oh, my. Uh, but not 
this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay. Seek to gain those heavenly treasures. They will never pass away. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Completed is to God I have been true. Fair and bright, my home and glory. My enraptured soul shall view. So let's hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to Changing hands, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Is that the prayer of every man and woman, boy, girl, in here today? God bless you. May He keep you that way, humble in your spirit, soft in your soul. Forgiving others as Christ, for God's sake, forgive you. Be kind, generous, welcome. Is there any more activities in the church, Brother Neville? Listen, my dear Christian friend, as you journey from here this morning, we haven't got much here to offer in the way of materials. You strangers in our gates, we've got a little tabernacle. We're poor people, just as poor as we can be. We are we're sorry that we can't have something a little better to hear represent uh, a welcome to the people. But my brother and sister, on the inside of this little wall here, that the structure's not so very much to look at, but you'll find a welcome yeah. for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Come worship with us if you have a place to go. We've got a lovely pastor here, yeah. some fine man here on the deacon boards and so forth, some fine Christian. Come find your seat, and you will always be welcome here at the Brandon Tabernacle. We only have one thing we can do. We love the Lord Jesus with all of our hearts. We believe the Word to be the, this Bible to be the Word of God. We don't have any textbooks, just this Bible. We don't have no law here of this, that, or Well, our law is love. Our creed is Christ. And we just love you with all of our hearts. Come back and be with us if you wish to. And we we'll hope someday to see you in a better land. Where we are. But on this time, let's go marching to Zion, if you will, while you stand to your feet. Amen. <coughs> Teddy, would you come up here just a minute, son, right quick? Hey. We're communion service tonight. Oh, well, I'm glad to be here for that. Listen, Jesus said, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life, and I'll raise him up to the last day. Amen. That word's immortal. Is that right? Yes. All right, all together, I want to say marching design. All right.
Now, let's turn around and say, I am Mr. Jones, and I'm glad to meet you. Come back to the tabernacle. Be friendly. Smile. Everybody, all right now. We're my